So, you think you want to live the van life, huh? You think you've got what it takes to live life on the road. Well, I think that's a swell idea, and I'd like to help you out if I can. Let me give you a quick rundown. Oh, and uh, in case you haven't noticed, I'm not actually moving in slow motion. I'm just driving really slowly because, you know, that's what you do when you live in a van and when you start to drive fast off road, everything that you own starts to move and make noises like this. All right, so I mean, well, what's the first step in converting a van? Confucius say, if man want to convert van, he must purchase van. They didn't actually have vans when Confucius was alive, but I'm pretty sure that he would agree with that logic. So step one, acquire a van. There's a van for every budget. Scour the internet until you found the one. Congratulations. Whether you chose a Euro van you can stand up in or a retro Dodge Ram, you're gonna be spending a lot of time with your new friends, so get to know them well. Take all of your measurements and think over what kind of layout you want and what will fit in your van. As you go through your regular day-to-day -day routine at home, think about what the ideal version of this would look like in a van. Check out other builds and collect screenshots and notes about what you like, as well as make notes about what you don't like. Try to look for the things that are missing. Everybody wants a van that's homey and aesthetically pleasing, but don't forget to think about the important stuff too, like your bathroom. On the minimal end, you can opt for a pee bottle and use a public restroom for your more serious business. On the larger and more expensive end, you can get as fancy as a composting toilet. Consider how much water you will need. You want to make sure you have enough to drink, cook with, and do dishes. If you're not showering in your van, a couple gallons a day is probably sufficient, especially if you're using a foot pump, which helps conserve water. And don't forget that your water needs to be safe to drink. On the road, you may find yourself filling up at some questionable sources, so have some sort of filtration system or a place you can store purified drinking water from the store. While we're on the topic of nourishing yourself, how are you going to cook? The easiest option is to use a camp stove. They work great and don't take up precious counter space when they're not in use. You'll also need somewhere to store your food. Have an area in your design designated for dry food and plan to incorporate a fridge or cooler somewhere. There are plenty of options for van-friendly fridges. The one I use is a Dometic 45 liter, and I really like it. And don't forget that you'll also need a place to store your utensils and cookware. It's really easy to overlook these auxiliary items you use in your everyday life, so take careful account of them and make sure that they have a home. This includes your clothing. I find packing cubes to be the easiest way to keep them all organized, but what about when they get dirty? You don't want to find yourself with a whole load of dirty laundry and nowhere to put it. So plan a place for that as well. I have a laundry bag that lives under my bed, and that works out just fine. Similarly, you'll want to make sure you have a designated place for your trash and recycling. When off the grid, those things can gradually add up, and you don't want to have to navigate your rubbish when doing everyday tasks. I largely overlooked this and now end up using just a plastic bag between my fridge and living area for my trash, and I put my recycling in the passenger door pocket. Not ideal, but it works. Next, you'll need electricity. Educate yourself on the difference between voltage, amperage, and wattage, and do a rough estimation of the amount of energy you would need to power your things each day. Then, add a buffer for cloudy weather. Use that figure to determine the size of the batteries and solar panels you will need, and get yourself a pure sine wave inverter so you can have wall plugs in your van. Now, van life looks great in all the photos because the weather is always nice and the doors are always open, but that's not the reality. Reality is that there's still seasons and it can still get cold. Depending on where you're going to be and how often you'll be in the cold, consider getting a furnace or some other heating device. Vented furnaces run off either propane or diesel. If you have a diesel, you can plumb yours directly to your van's diesel tank. If not, you'll need to carry fuel with you. I have a 12 gallon propane tank that supplies both my furnace and my camp stove. Now that you've given everything careful consideration, thought through the utilities you need, and perfected your design, it's time to start building. Alright, so it is day one. 
and it's kind of daunting being in such an open space. I recommend starting off with some sound deadening. A van is like a big metal drum. Sound deadening mats help to reduce the vibration of the metal sidewalls, which drastically reduces the amount of outside sound that gets in, inside sound that gets out, and road noise when driving. Metal has worse insulating properties than a wet rag, so proper insulation is essential to having a well temperature regulated home on wheels. There are many ways you can go about this. Spray foam, foam boards, rock wool, alpaca fiber, other animal fiber, old denim. Hell, if you've got some dead bodies you're trying to get rid of, they might even do the trick. Research which option is best for you and make sure not to forget the floor. With the insulation in, you can put in your subfloor. This is basically a large piece of plywood cut to size to form the base of your van, and it's the plane you will be anchoring the bases of all your future furniture and cabinetry to. Make sure it is well and thoroughly secured to the van floor. I used a couple tubes of liquid nails caulk and weighed down the subfloor with some dumbbells, and the floor is super sturdy. It's a similar song and dance for the walls, except instead, I used some countersunk self-tapping tech screws to mount this half-inch birch plywood to the van sides, then covered the holes with some Bondo and sanded flush. Now it's time to start making this van look like a home. Begin installing your most important and structural pieces, like this partition wall, then slowly build out the cabinetry in the rest of the van. Before we make the ceiling look all nice and pretty, we need to make sure that we bring the solar connection in the roof. Mount your solar panels on the roof and bring the cables in through the top. These ones are going into the partition wall I made that holds the solar charge controller. While you're up there, cut another hole for your vent fan and throw that in. With the cables from the solar panels in, you're now free to finish up your ceiling. Run the wires you will need for your ceiling down lights, insulate it, and tidy it up with some tongue and groove planks. Wire your solar charge controller to the battery bank and your battery bank to your fuse block and inverter. If you're the slightest bit unsure, consult an electrician. Then wire all of your appliances as you go. For your bed, order a mattress in a box and cut it to the sizes you need for your layout. Mine are cut so that they function as a couch when the bed is away, and when extended, the back supporting cushions fill in the gap to make a full size bed. Have them upholstered. When you get to your kitchen cabinetry, install your sink, faucet, and a little soap dispenser. Run your sink water through a P-trap into a gray water container. Don't forget the P-trap. It will keep any odors fermenting in your gray water tank from venting into your van. For your propane, figure out where you want to put your tank. Many people put them inside the van. If you do this, it's best to put it in a sealed vented box just in case of any leaks. Carbon monoxide poisoning is a real threat and should be taken seriously. Make sure to install a carbon monoxide detector in your van and place it lower than the bed. Carbon monoxide is heavier than air and will sink. Place it too high and it may not alert you before it's too late. On my van, I opted to put the spare tire on the roof and place a 12 gallon propane tank where the tire used to live. Run a regulated hose to your furnace and wire the thermostat in an easily accessible area that gets good airflow. If you're planning on using the same propane tank for your camp stove, you may need to use a T so that you can run a higher pressure line to your stove, as most stoves function at a much higher PSI. Double check for leaks. You'll need some way to secure your drawers and cabinet doors from opening while you're driving. The two simplest solutions I've found are to use bungee cords and magnetic child locks. Though I know that there are now some nifty locking drawer handles that are made specifically for vans, however, they require a specific cabinet design. Now that you've got your van fully functional, give it the finishing touches and hit the road. Now that you're on the road, you're going to have to welcome a few new chores and changes to your lifestyle. First and foremost, you'll need to be on top of your water consumption. You do not want to run out of water, nor do you want to overfill your gray water tank and have it back up into the sink. Check both regularly. You can find potable water in most gas stations, campgrounds, and dump stations. Dump stations are a great place to get rid of your old gray water. Speaking of water, unless you built a shower into your van, you're going to need to find a way to bathe. A countrywide gym membership is a great option, but since we live in COVID times, I've been opting instead for truck stop showers, solar showers, and dips in the river. But what you'll lack in running water and other household luxuries, you'll make up for in flexibility. 
I mean, you can stay anywhere within reason. Okay, maybe not anywhere, but here are some great options. National Forest and Bureau of Land Management lands are public land. You can camp there for weeks and socially distance your little heart out. But if you're in a metropolitan area, check out a database like Allstays, iOverlander, or the Van Life app. Essentially, these apps are indexes of spots contributed by other van dwellers. Make sure to leave the spots better than you found them so they don't get shut down. And if you come across any spots worth sharing, pay it back into the group for others to benefit from the same way you have benefited from their contribution. So those are the van life basics. I hope you found this video exciting and not too daunting. Uh, life on the road is extremely rewarding. It exposes you to new and sometimes challenging situations on a pretty regular basis. And it really pushes you out of your comfort zone, which is a great thing. But know that this video is by no means the world's most comprehensive resource on transitioning into this lifestyle. If I were to make a video that dived into all of the intricacies, it would have been as long as the Lord of the Rings trilogy. So make sure that you do your own research. And if there's something that I forgot, drop a comment down below so that others can see it. And thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the road. Take care. <laughs>